What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be talking about Chelsea v Liverpool. We're going to make our predictions, talk about both teams going into this game. We're going to talk about team news and the predicted lineup as well. We'll also delve a little bit into some transfer news as well because we know there's more developments in the Mendy situation. He isn't going to be hit for Liverpool. Probably isn't going to be here for the game after that as well. But we know this transfer is going through as well. It's a, it's a Kai Havertz thing. It's a when, not if. You know it's happening. It's just whenever it does happen. But there are developments in the transfer, so we're going to talk about that as well. But before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button press the subscribe button as well and change it from red to blue because this is not a red week this is hopefully going to be a blue week and also press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever i release any new content on this channel now chelsea versus liverpool premier league champions versus last season's fourth place team but have completely revitalized their squad since then this game is going to be really exciting and it's because both these teams are looking at the Premier League title. Chelsea are more peaking than actually being generally serious right now. We just still want to see how the team gels. But these are two very strong teams going out against each other. And both sides haven't been that convincing in the Premier League so far, which means that both sides are going into this game trying to prove a point. I think it's going to be a really high scoring game. I think it's going to be massively open. There's holes in both teams as we saw in, in match day one. And that's exactly the point I want to go into as well. Liverpool may not necessarily be the same Liverpool that we've seen from previous seasons. Now, Liverpool won their last game against Leeds. They beat them 4-3 in what was a very exciting encounter. It was a good game for Mo Salah. I will give him that. He got a hat-trick. But in the case of Liverpool, it didn't look like the same Liverpool from last season. Like I'll give full credit to Marcelo Bielsa. It's not just Liverpool get struggling against a promoted side. Leeds are a very strong side with one of the most meticulous managers in the game in Marcelo Bielsa. They're a good side. And they know how to break down any sort of squad. You've just seen the Fulham game as well. They were 4-1 up at one point. They aren't just going to be pushovers. So it was going to be hard for Liverpool regardless. But I can't shake the fact that Liverpool last season would have probably done away with Leeds a lot easier than they would have done this season. That's why I think this game could be a lot tighter and could potentially go Chelsea's way. I don't want to go into this video and then just come across as overconfident like these are the Premier League champions. They have an unbelievable squad and they can do damage to us. But I don't know if the same fights in them from last season. We know as well, as Chelsea fans, we know exactly what second se season syndrome is. We've seen it. It's it's so hard to defend the Premier League title and it's so hard to go for that second season as champions with the same intensity when you're chasing that Premier League title. And I kind of think that could be the case for Liverpool. I know in pre-season they weren't entirely convincing. There wasn't any real alarm bells or anything, but they still didn't completely shine or anything like that. So I kind of, I know the one thing I'll say straight up is this game is going to be tighter than it was the last two times we faced them in the league. And then we aren't going to be pushovers in this one. But same way... Liverpool can be got at. If Van Dijk has the same shaky game that he did last week, he can get spun. If Trent has the same game he did last week, he can get spun. And our players can cause some problems. Our attacks got a lot stronger since last season. Even if we aren't going to see a lot of those players play in the game, the players that we do have can still cause damage. Chelsea... On the other hand, I do need to speak about them as well because we also weren't entirely convincing in our game. We beat Brighton 3-1, but I've already said plenty of times before that wasn't a 3-1 game. There were strong performances from the likes of Reese James, who was excellent on that right-hand side. The Zuma Christensen partnership was amazing, and I really hope they could build some consistency again. I also hope the arrival of Thiago Silva can bring the best out of those players in a competitive nature as well. Timo Werner as well had an excellent game. He didn't get the goal, but he was all over that attacking third, causing plenty of problems. And I do think he would have got two goals if he had the ball presented to him earlier in certain situations. But same way, we weren't entirely convincing, and there's a reason for that. We never really grasped the game. We never really dominated for large periods. Marcus Alonso still got spun round inside and out by Tarek Lamptey. And you also have to remember Kepa tax. And that is a thing. We've seen it so many times this season, especially in games against Liverpool. You know how much Liverpool love a worldie against us. Uh, Who scored? Jordan Henderson scored a worldie against us. Trent scored two free kicks off the bounce against us. Mo Salah's got one. Someone else will probably get one this year. Uh, Naby Keita as well. I forgot to even say him. Half of them were against Kepa, and we know Liverpool love a worldie against us. They love trying to find that top corner. And what is the thing we struggled the most with in goal is defending those long-range shots. 
One thing we need to do in this game is we need to make sure we keep the centre of the park filled with some Chelsea players. Do not leave an open gap in the middle of the park because they will just take a shot. And we've seen it so many times this season where a player just gets the ball in the middle and just says, yeah, fuck it, it's Kepa. Just bangs in a shot and it goes top left. It's not a meme anymore, it's real shit. And I'm sure managers are telling players to do it now because Kepa can't reach those top corners. Kepa can't reach for the far post. That's why so many teams try and shoot at us from range. And I'll be real, I can see this one happening again. I really can. I hope it's not a case like the last game we played where I genuinely thought we were going to come back against Liverpool, but Kepa came round and ruined it. And I hope it's not the same case again. We know that there is a goalie coming in, but he ain't here now, so we do have to rely on Kepa for now. And I said as well, he needs to have a brilliant first couple performances, otherwise that is it for his starting position. The first game didn't prove anything. Like, Brighton had barely any real chances at us. They still dominated some areas of the game, but the defence was good. Bar Marcus Alonso, the defence was good. They were, they were solid, they held their ground. Kepa had one save, fluffed the corner again, and then the Brighton equaliser happened. All, all to this is just proving the point that Kepa is going to cost us at some point. And I was really hoping this season it'd be a new Kepa, but we're not seeing it. If we don't see it in this game either, I really think it's curtains for him. I already think that because of the Brighton game, that's what's held up the Mendy negotiations for so long. Because they literally watched it and said, you need a goalkeeper, you're paying max price for a goalkeeper now. Not None of this 18 million crap. So, yeah, we know Kepa Tax is going to be an issue. This is why I'm not overly confident about this. Slightly, we can beat Liverpool. I'm not going to stand here and say that we can't. But Kepa Tax, I'll be real. Like, all it takes is one shot, and that's the jarring part. This isn't Brighton, where they're only going to have two or three chances. This is Liverpool. They are going to create chances. Mo Salah could completely do Alonso dirty for 90 minutes. Who knows? But we have to We have to see. We have to find out. This is why I'm saying if you lot are a neutral, you're going to seriously enjoy this game. Because this game is going to be open. I think there's going to be open gaps in the defences for both sides. And there's players to exploit those gaps in both teams. So I think a high scoring game. Um, let's go into team news. Kovacic returns to Chelsea following suspension. But our new signing Silva. Chilwell, Ziyech are all still out with injuries as well as Pulisic and Billy Gilmore. Silva isn't out with an injury by the way, he's just still come into the team and he's come in too early so he's not playing yet. Liverpool, they've got no one injured and also Thiago could be eligible to start after signing yesterday. So yeah, that's great. I will say the one thing I said about se se uh, second season syndrome with Liverpool. The one thing that could stop that is competition for places. And that was the one thing I was waiting for Liverpool to do. And they only just now look to start doing it with Thiago and Diogo Jota coming in as well. So who knows? It could still be a tough Liverpool side. And bringing in those two new signings is going to bring the best out of those midfielders and those attackers as well. Because now they know there's a new player out for that competition. And that's the best thing you can do for second season syndrome. And that's just keep the competition going. Otherwise players get complacent. We've seen it so many times. 17-18 Chelsea. 15-16 Chelsea. We've seen it so many times. 10-11 Chelsea if you want to go there as well. They finished second but they didn't win a game for two months. So you, we know exactly what it feels. Um, we're going to the predicted lineup as well. In goal, Kepa. It is what it is. Just please, please have a good game. Please. Rhys James goes in at right back. He had an excellent performance. I really think he's got a slot in there as well. Kurt Zuma and Andreas Christensen are the two centre-backs and Left back, actually, a guy I haven't spoken about. I've been talking so much about Alonso getting done. Put Aspel Equator at left back because he will actually give us a defensive solidity. Yeah, he might not be as good going forward, but that is fine. Against Liverpool, especially with all the injuries that we still have, I'd rather us be a bit more defensively solid. So I'm going to put Aspel in at left back. I'm going to go 4 2 3 1 as well because I want two DMs in the middle, making sure no Liverpool player has any free space to bag a long shot. So I want Kante and Kovacic in there as well. Kovacic is back from suspension, so I play him because he's a slightly more fit player. If Jorginho played, I wouldn't mind. I think the little Mesha styles would be good as well. Jorginho would sit deep a bit more. Kante can flow a bit further forward. But I'd rather go Kante and Kovacic. I don't think you can bench Chelsea's player of the season. In midfield. Um, I'm going to put Mason Mount on the right because of the injury to 
Who is it? Who is it? Who's injured? Pulisic, yeah. Because the injury to Pulisic, I'm going to put Mountain on the wings with Callum Hudson Doy. And we're going to put Kai Havertz in the middle. Didn't have the best game on the right last game. I want to see him play his preferred position in that number 10 role. So I'm going to put Mason. I'm going to put Kai Havertz in the middle. And Timo Werner, the gunman himself. Werner. Before you lot butcher me again in the comment section, Timo Werner starts up front. See, I'm actually correcting myself now. I'm improving. Like, give me time. I'll finally get this sorted. But yeah, that's my predicted lineup. I'm going to go for a score prediction. I said 3 3 on Coppish because I do think it's going to be a high scoring game. But I'm going to book Chelsea to win this. So I'm going to go 4 3 Chelsea. Game full of goals. We already know what it's going to be. And yeah. That's my prediction. Um, we'll go through the transfer news quickly. Mendy does look to finally be confirmed. It's a fee of around 22 million euros that has been agreed on, which is very surprising because I thought I thought they were going to hold out for max fee. They, I was hearing 28 million plus Tomori just yesterday. And now Fabrizio Romano's reported the fee's been around 22 million euros and hasn't even involved Tomori's name in it. So if this is the case, Marina has just pulled another W out of the bag, which is mad. I really wish this was a couple days ago because then maybe he'd be free for the Liverpool game and I'd be a lot more confident going into this game. But if he's back for the next game, cool. I don't care. Goalkeeper to me is the same. I have the same energy that I had for left back i don't care who we sign it will be better than what we have now just get somebody in we're getting mendy in he's tall he's got great wingspan he'll catch a couple corners he ain't gonna get beaten at his far post like kepa does he probably won't get beaten at his near post either he'll compete with the spot but the way kepa's playing he's probably just gonna displace him straight up but hey a goalie looks to be coming so i'm gassed let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts on chelsea v liverpool let me know your score predictions as well and don't forget to check out this channel straight after the game. I'm going to be doing a review and player ratings as well. And this one, I won't be as yacked off my head and give Ruben Loftus-Cheek a six after that performance. So don't worry. I'm going to be calm for this one. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.